Welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over aspartate and asparagine biosynthesis. All right. So it turns out that very similarly to glutamate and glutamine, which are synthesized from a TCA cycle intermediate, which happens to be alpha-ketoglutarate, aspartate and asparagine are also synthesized from a TCA cycle intermediate, except it's not alpha-ketoglutarate. It's actually oxaloacetate, which is shown right here towards the very end of the TCA cycle. So oxaloacetate is going to be transaminated by, a tran by an enzyme called aspartate transaminase to aspartate. Okay? So in other words, it's a one-step reaction to get us from oxaloacetate to aspartate. Now we have this concept like I keep going at in biosynthesis that we're going to take everyday molecules from here, from there, we're going to siphon them off of or out of important pathways to use to make useful things for us. And oxaloacetate is no exception. Turns out we can take that out of the TCA cycle and use it to make aspartate and asparagine. And initially, we're going to make aspartate. Now, that's a transamination reaction, so we're also going to have to uh, get the amine ultimately from glutamate, and that's going to get back alpha ketoglutarate. Now, what happens to the alpha ketoglutarate? Well, like we're hopefully used to seeing, this alpha ketoglutarate can then be put back into the TCA cycle. So, yes, we end up taking an oxaloacetate out, but we put an alpha ketoglutarate back in that can then go back into a series of reactions that can actually generate energy, certainly. Okay? Now, aspartate is then going to be converted into asparagine, and this is catalyzed by asparagine synthetase. Now, this reaction is not a transamination reaction. This is actually sometimes termed an amidotransferase. Sometimes this enzyme will be referred to as aspartate amidotransferase, and the, um, the nitrogen that you get from it is going to come from glutamine this nitrogen right there. That's where it's going to come from. Okay, So what's going to happen is that amine right here as part of the amide group of glutamine is going to be hydrolyzed off. That's a separate reaction and occurs in a different domain than the other reaction. So in one domain we have a glutamine hydrolyzing activity. Glutamine gets hydrolyzed to glutamate and you get this free ammonia that gets released. Okay. In another domain, aspartate is going to get phosphorylated by ATP to make phosphoaspartate, and then what's going to happen is the ammonia is going to condense with this R group over here, and you're going to get asparagine. I'm going to have another video that explains the mechanism of this enzyme, but suffice it to say, its mechanism is identical to that of glutamine synthetase. And I do have a video on that, but I'll be sure to post another one for asparagine synthetase. But suffice it to say, from just a TCA cycle intermediate oxaloacetate, it's a two-step process to get asparagine and a one-step to get aspartate. So because we can siphon this off of our own TCA cycle, aspartate and asparagine are therefore non-essential amino acids, meaning we don't have to get through the diet. We can synthesize those de novo. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. All right, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.